Update on election laws from the legislative session and a possible special session. Uh, Mr. Rassi, the floor is yours. Good morning, committee members. Thank you very much. We have now reached approximately the 100th day of the state legislative session. All committee hearings have been in concluded in both chambers and we're doing primarily floor action at this point. There will be additional committee hearings for the budget at some point, and we are looking at potentially four or five special sessions. The governor may call a separate special session just for the budget. There may be a special session on a tax package. There may be a special session on a new education funding formula, and there may be a special session on a proposed water authority. So those are the most significant items that are still outstanding. Earlier this week, the House of Representatives introduced 12 budget bills to attempt to do a continuation budget, basically a baseline budget continuing last year's budget adjusted for inflation, and all 12 of those bills failed in the House Appropriations Committee and didn't move forward at all. None of us expected that to make it all the way through the process, but we were a little surprised, those of us that work down there all the time, that the leadership decided to bring those bills forward in the Appropriations Committee without even having the votes to get them out of that committee. Because of that deadlock, all of the election bills have been held up for the last three to four weeks. So there has been virtually no activity on any controversial bills during that period because primarily of a rift in the Senate where Senator Boyer and Senator Eugenie Rita have been no votes on a number of the more controversial issues and the more partisan issues and there have been a number of absences in the House of Representatives. So one of the things that I would suggest is that I come back in front of you a month from now and we may have a better idea of the final disposition of many of these election bills because many of them are up in the air and we don't know if they're going to make it through the process or not. If I had to speculate at this point, the vast majority of them will not make it through the process. I have circulated two documents to the county administrator that I believe has been provided to all of you. The first one is a two-page PowerPoint, and that lists the bills that have already been enacted and signed by the governor the bills that are supported by the Arizona Association of Counties that are moving along and we would expect to pass, and the bills that are most actively still moving are all on the first page of that document. The second page includes the bills that do not seem to be moving at this point. Because we are past committee hearings, there can be no more strike everything amendments. So it's more difficult at this point in the session to revise one of these items, although portions of those bills could be amended on the floor of the House or the Senate onto a number of the other bills that are out there. The second document I provided, which is the longer document titled Elections Bills, provides a more detailed summary of each of the bills that we anticipate to be moving forward. Not every single bill that was introduced, but the ones that have either been enacted or at least still have some possibility of moving forward. And that includes information on where the bills are in the process, a description of the bill, and who the sponsors of the bill are. So at this point, there are only a small handful of bills that have made it all the way through the process and have been signed by the governor. The rest of these, we'd expect to see action probably in this, the rest of this month or in May. 
Last year, the session was the third longest on record, went 171 days, went into June. Neither party really wants to do that this year. It's an election year and a redistricting year, so the members are very, very anxious to end the legislative session. But until they can figure out the votes to get a budget done, um, we're going to be sitting around a fair amount. The last two weeks, instead of meeting the regular four days a week, they've only been actively meeting two to three days a week and moving a minimal number of non-controversial bills that have bipartisan support. Other than that, almost everything has been on hold. Um, and I'd be happy to, to answer any questions on any of these or the process, and I think even more come back in a month what, once we know what actually does and doesn't pass. Thank you, Mr. Rassi. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Rassi? I have any questions, but I want to thank you. Barbara, really turn your microphone on. Okay. <laughs> thank you. This is a really excellent summary, and I appreciate all the work you've put into it. Thank you so much. Any Certainly. other questions and or comments? I will have an updated version as the session moves on. Okay. Since you have a time crunch, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again on May 20th with, with, with thank you very some, much. some and more news. Yes, indeed. And thank if during that time there are any bills, um, you know, like 1629, others that you have special interest in, feel free to pass a note on the staff, get me that, and I'll make certain to, to highlight some more detail on any of those you know, that just may come up in the, the balance of your meeting today or at any time. Always happy to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item. Uh, we did have a request from the recorder's office because of the workload over there pertaining to election signature verification that she be allowed to address all the issues on the agenda that pertain to the recorder's office so that she can get back to work on other things. Um, if I miss something that pertains to the recorder's office, uh, please let me know. But the first item I see on the agenda that would relate to the recorder's office would be an update on the e-poll books. Yes, that's right. Uh, this week we received 200 units um, to begin acceptance testing. That acceptance testing will start, I believe, next week. The Elections Department and the Recorder's Office will be working together to get that all done, and we'll be doing it in the election space because they have enough room. <laughs> to do this. Um, we've also received all of the cradle point devices that will be used to um, access the internet for the e-poll books. Um, we got them almost a month before they told us they would be able to be received, so we're very glad about that. Um, Central ITD is currently working on um, configuring those units. Um, a number of them will be configured in order to have two SIM cards to be able to access two different internet providers, in particular for the areas of the county that have difficulty with internet access. And we'll get those first and be able to test those in those areas quickly. Thank you. Anybody have any questions regarding e-poll books? Yeah, a couple, please. Uh, we had this discussion last month and uh, Mr. Wisely was here uh, asked a number of questions. One of the things I'd asked him was about the project plan and the schedule for completion, all right? And you mentioned you had received 200 units out of how many? I don't have that number off the top of my head. Okay. It's more than, more than half. Do we have a date for receipt of the other half? Again, not off the top of my head. I, we can check on that for you. What's the date that you need these by? Do you guys have that with you? I guess the one question here I'd ask David, uh, Mr. Wisely, was that what is the date that you have to have all this stuff received by, in place, checked out, tested, verified, uh, so on and so forth, in order to proceed with this implementation of these e-poll books? What is, the, what is the drop dead date, basically? Commissioner Hurley, is your microphone on? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Get a little closer. Better? 
better. No problem. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so what is, what's like the drop dead date? I mean, it's, it, as I asked you last week, there has to be some a project plan, any kind of project plan. Mm -hmm. You always have a point where you have to decide, we can't do this. Correct. What is that date? I don't have it. Mr. With Chairman. Me. Commissioner White. Um, Commissioner Hurley, I may have something to offer here. I did have an opportunity to meet with the new elections director last week, and uh, she is very aware of your concerns about a plan. Uh, those are shared by the director, Good. and they are in the process of, of developing a, a formal, written down, presentable plan. Uh, I don't know exactly where they are in that. It's unfortunate they're not able to be here today, but they are addressing your concerns and uh, are going to put a hard timeline on it. That's the experience of the elections director in her previous uh, assignment in Virginia, and she intends to do that here as well. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, but we are way, way past the point at which that should have been done. All right, so I'm concerned. I'd like to have some answers to those things. I mean, we're, what, two months away from, from voting? You know, 120, a little more than two months. So um, I think that was all I had on that. There's some other questions I've got to have later on. Update on voting center locations. I have one That's question. the elections department. That, that's if, not, if that's, that's okay. not our, that's not us. Let, then, then, let, then let's pass on that one. I just uh, had a question, Brian. Oh, Commissioner Talman. Oh, at the last meeting, we asked for an opportunity for the commission members to actually have a demonstration. I wonder if that is uh, scheduled yes. yet. Yes, that, it hasn't been designated when that's going to happen, but we're at, that's absolutely in the plans. Thank you. So, what, if I may, that actually reminds me of a question. There was a question posed uh, about participation of observers in some of the checkout and the training of this equipment so that we would you know understand how it works is that that question was asked what do our staff people ask that question of somebody in the elections department and was told that that wasn't in the plan right now is that being considered at all that is being considered and we're working on it right now as soon as i have everything situated all the equipment and make some training and go through it myself then i will invite half of you there and the other half there another day. Because if there's more than six of you, we have to have a meeting. Sure, excellent, okay. And that would, could we bring in some outside folks that are working on this election stuff? Like I'll have to check with Constance, but okay. I, but yeah, if she says yes, then of course. Okay. Well, one of the persons I've talked about actually was invited to be an inspector, so she would be very much involved in, in the uh, okay. invitation. Yeah, then that should work. But okay, I that's, that's what I'm talking Constance. about, people, people yeah. that are actually on the, the volunteer list for being inspectors and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, that was my plan too, was to meet with some inspectors. Just Perfect. To, yeah. Status of drop boxes. And I uh, believe that is a recorder's that, function. That is a recorder's office function. Before I give us complete status, I want to emphasize that there is a distinction between what in the throughout the state is commonly called a drop box, which is a big metal box that's unattended that people can leave their ballots in that the ballots are retrieved from. In Pima County, we have never used those types of boxes. Our boxes are always attended. So we have a box with two people of different political parties. The chain of custody is maintained in that fashion with two people of different political party, parties handling the box at all times and documented for each box. And those boxes are exclusively at our early voting sites. Any questions regarding drop boxes? Um, the only other one I could see on here that might pertain to the recorder's office is a plan for military voting. Uh, um, there's actually one other, the process for assisting vulnerable voters. Okay. I believe that refers to what we in the recorder's office call our team voting process. It's a special election board that can be sent out to people who um, are unable to either, it's too late for them to get an early ballot. Um, some of these people can't fill them out themselves, and so we'll send a team of people, again, two people at least of different political parties to assist the voter, bring the ballot to them, assist them if necessary with marking the ballot, or make sure that there's no one trying to unduly influence the voter as they complete their ballot, and bring the ballot back to the ballot processing center. 
Any questions? Yeah, what, one, one question. Just, 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 oh. Commissioner White. Uh, yes, Ms. Franklin, on this uh, team voting, mm -hmm. is there a highlighted area of the recorder's website that tells people that that's available? I know in the past that it's been a well-kept secret. It, unfortunately, it has been a well-kept secret. Uh, the plan is to put something on the website that will highlight that that is available. It's Thank not on there yet. Thank you. Commissioner Hurley. First off, I'm very glad to hear there will be no unmonitored drop boxes in Pima County. Thank there you. never have been. Thank you. Um, regarding the uh, the two-person teams that got these uh, helpful voters, are those, I, it's, I assume you're going to have different parties or lanyards two or whatever. Two people, different political parties, always. Now, are those, do those come from your staff or are yes. they, okay, so they are from your We don't use staff. volunteers for gotcha. any processes. Okay. Further questions? And the last one, I believe, uh, the plan for military voting. Well, uh, UOCAVA covers both military and overseas citizens. Um, they can receive and return their ballots by mail, email, or fax. That's based on federal statute and uh, Arizona statute. The initial mailing or sending out of those ballots is 45 days prior to the election. Any requests received after that date are processed within 24 hours. And am I correct in assuming that whether we do vote centers or poll locations or e-poll books or paper books, mail, mil not military affected. voting has is it, no. is not impacted at all? Not by at all. Whichever way this process goes. Not at all. Thank you. Any, Any other process, questions? Those voters can register and vote up till 7 p.m. on election day. Okay. So if we if we receive a completed. FPCA, federal postcard application from those voters. They can submit that form as late as just before 7 p.m. as long as we can get their ballot by 7 p.m. on election day. And one last question. Commissioner uh, Tellman. The, the other item that you skipped over is staffing in the recorder's office. Is it fully staffed now? Well, we are continuing to hire intermittents that will be helping us, our intermittents are our temporary staff members that will be helping us out during the primary and general election. Um, I think we might have one other position that we're interviewing for next week. Thank you. Yeah, I believe she was referring to the higher level staffing. Yeah. Yes, and we have one position that's still being interviewed for next week. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I've got a couple more points, please. Commissioner Hurley. I think there are a couple more items here that are on this list here. Uh, one of the things that was revealed in the audit process, whatever you want to say about it, is that were some holes, I believe, in chain of custody run back, uh, which I believe you send your uh, stuff, they, they print the ballots and all that kind of stuff. There's no monitoring of, uh, at run, run back of what goes on there. Is that correct? Not entirely. Um, it's a function that goes between the elections department and the recorder's office. The elections department is responsible for the printing of the ballots, okay. and the recorder's office is responsible for sending out the early ballots. All right, then, I'm sorry, my question goes to them then. One last one. Um, the legislature recently banned the use of external money for election act activities, Zucker boxes, they called it. But there was some discussion that possibly that there are nonprofits that are working with the agencies, the recorder's office and the uh, election department. Do you have any, any outside uh, third party company uh, groups that are directly working with you on activities? The only group that works with us on a specific activity is the League of Women Voters. Um, they produce this um, pamphlet, a citizen's directory, directory of election officials. They don't provide us with any funding. They give us some copies of these to make available to our staff. It's an easy reference tool. Um, they also work with us to make sure that the language they include in here about voter registration is correct, but they don't provide us with any funding and we don't provide them with any funding either. Okay. Very good, thank you. Um, there are groups doing voter registration, but that's not anything but they're not, coor they're not coordinating with you guys or anything? Well, I mean, they have to bring us the forms. Well, sure. Other than that, no. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. You can go back to verifying signatures. <laughs> I really appreciate your letting us go first. There's a lot of challenges this year. Okay, next item on the agenda that hasn't been addressed so far, city election. Uh, Commissioner White. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know how this got uh, on the agenda. It's 
nothing that I proposed. We, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are both monitoring the city election. We have already done the logic and accuracy tests and they all passed well. Um, we are, now that the ballots are starting to come in, we will be having, both parties will have monitors at every ballot counting uh, opportunity. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is 10X University and it's credited to you and I believe you don't know anything about that one either. I think well, we skipped over voting center locations. Number C. Okay. You want to go back to B or do D? Let's 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 do E and. Okay. Uh, the only uh, issue I had here was uh, I had a question or a comment, I guess, at the last meeting about any training materials that the vendors of our poll or voting center equipment might already have produced and whether or not we would be able to utilize that for training our election boards that are going to be working in the voting centers. They're working on getting that to us, but I have been working with the e-poll books this whole week and making a rough draft of a, of a training manual for it. So. Okay. It's a little bit surprising in that 10X has been in the business for quite a while. I, I would have thought that they had developed some training materials. Not for the poll books that I've seen so far. All right. Um, does, the does the cradle point system require additional training as well? I believe just setting it up, putting the cords together, making sure it's connected appropriately. Okay, but you don't have to interface with a computer and enter passwords or anything like that? Only with the poll book, and then I believe, we haven't worked through it yet, we just got them, but I believe it'll sync up with the iPads, and we might just have to add a code. We haven't really set that up yet. We haven't had a chance to, because we just got them. Okay, thank you. It's a okay. similar process to the MIFIs and the Wi-Fis we used to have when we were doing voting places. So. Okay. Uh, can you give us an update on voting center locations? Uh, yes, they're going great. We're about 90% complete with contracts in hand. Uh, the 10% difference, we have a verbal, verbal case, but sometimes it takes a little longer for them to get the contracts in. But we went to these places and talked to them face to face. They have agreed. We've already went out and we've done the ADA surveys. So with the ADA surveys, you get a one-on-one -on -one face to face. And um, so, so far so good. So we should be done, I wanna say, in the next two weeks, we should have 100% of the contracts in hand. We're missing five. Can you give us an update on the total number of vote centers that we're talking about? 129. 129? Yes, sir. We kept that original number from the last meetings that we had with the Board of Supervisors, and we came up with the 129, and that's what we've been sticking to so far. Questions from other commissioners? Commissioner White? Um, I think a month or maybe six weeks ago, I had a meeting with your with you and uh, the staff, of course. and I asked in that meeting if you could at some point, I know you need to complete the contracts before you could do it, but at some point I'd like to have the gross total number for the amount that we spend on contracting and renting of course. these locations. I think it would be important for the public to understand that uh, elections are not free. Oh yes, of course, yeah, we are definitely tracking that and as soon as we get the other five contracts, because some of them are our locations that we are paying for, those are usually the ones that are taking a little longer just because there's a, a, a longer process just to get the money back and forth and get everything paid so we can get everything situated, where some of these other locations, it's hey, yes, sign the contract, we sign the contract, no money involved, it's just contract agreements and you're done. Where some of these other places, on top of the contract, you're also doing the whole the financial portion of it. So yeah, that's why you're missing about five contracts, just waiting for everything to clear and come through, so. All right, thank you. Commissioner Tillman. How many of the 129 locations are in the urban area? What do you mean by urban area? Not rural. <laughs> 
Oh, not rule. <laughs> oh, well, you have what well, you have out of the hundred and twenty out of the hundred and twenty nine. You've got twenty five that are rule. Thank you. So the difference. Yeah. So you're looking at okay, a thank you. one of one. Any other questions on vote center locations? Yes. Commissioner Hurley. Um, about a month, six weeks ago, you, a letter came out that listed 129. I assume that's similar to this list right here? It had yes, 129. sir. Yes, sir. And that letter listed some criteria that you were using to select the vote centers. Yes, sir. One of those criteria was 2,000 square feet. Yes, sir. And on that, on that list, it actually listed the square footage of the various facilities. Yes. This spreadsheet doesn't have that on there. Okay. By my count on that list in that letter, there were about a dozen, maybe 20 out of the 129 that right. actually met that criteria? Yes. Out of, out of that list, excuse me, one more time? The, one of the criteria on the list was 2,000 square feet. Yes. And on that list, you listed the square footage of each of the facilities. It's not on this list. But I went through and counted, just did a rough visual count, and I came up with about 20, 25, maybe 30, because some of those had ranges of, of square footage right. that met that 2,000 square foot criteria. Okay. Can you speak to that? I mean, yes. we, obviously, well, obviously these don't meet the 2,000 square foot. Right. So there are rural locations. So there's a, so some of the rural locations that you, there's at least, I want to say, well, you, on the rural area, you have 25, but I want to say at least 20 of those areas are historic locations that that's the only location available and the square footage stays the same that's why we just try to use historic locations for those outskirts so you have at least 20 that if you're looking on that list off the bat that are not going to be the 2,000 square feet there's no way to make them 2,000 square feet there's nothing out there or available to accommodate that now as in as for some of the areas in the metro area I added additional polling places. That's why we did go from the 120 to 129. And one of the reasons we did that was because you had some smaller locations. So within, I want to say within two to three miles, you have an additional location nearby to compensate for the fact that that location is smaller than others. So if I do have a location in this area within, within a mile or two, you're going to have another location close by that they can go to. So you don't have those additional lines. You don't have that additional hassle. All right. Um, it would be really helpful uh, to have a, a map with all these marked on a map so we could actually see the distribution and the uh, dispersion, especially the areas, things like that. Because I looked, last time I looked on the east side on that list, there were like, on the Tank Verde area, there were like two locations I found. Now, that's a large area for two locations, which really weren't that far apart. Right. So, is there any way we can get this to get a map with these things plotted on it? Uh, yeah, that, that'd be fine. We do have maps available, so um, I can get with my uh, map department and we can get you a map sent yeah, to you. Because re reading this list, I mean, it says visual list, there's 129. Of course, it's, of really, course. I have no idea what, what, what it looks like. No worries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, testing of equipment, Mr. Federico. Yes, we have um, some of the iPads that are we're using for testing with the vouchers, with the voting vouchers, printers that come with them. And those are working well. They sync up pretty good. Um, and I've even ran some um, tests with a voter trying to vote three times, and the system catches them after the third time. Um, and we're working on what we want the vouchers to say when we print them out. Because right now it's just a code because we're testing right now. But we're working with 10X to get that figured out. And the team, both the recorders and us, to see what we want, how we want them to look. So any, any other questions? Questions for Mr. Federico, Commissioner White. In past uh, exercises that we've gone through about trying to acquire e-poll books, mm -hmm. uh, one of the, or some of the systems, were able to read the uh, identity of the voter from a driver's license yes. or a military ID. Are these poll books yes. capable of doing that as well? Yes, they are capable of reading the Arizona driver's license. We're working to see if we can get them to read the military IDs as well, and then Native American IDs too. See if that's and possible. 
All right, thank you. And I, I don't know if there's a tribal identification card that is comparable yeah. to those others or whether or not those could be read. Yeah, so we're going to see if they can. More than likely not, but, we'll, but there's other forms of ID they can use as well. All right, thank so, you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, next item was commissioner's term expiration. I just wanted to bring this up as a point of information for the commissioners. Um, uh, Mr. Hurley picked up on his that it had expired. It has, he, he has been reinstated pending your loyalty oath and I'm going to assume you've sent that into. And and if you can get a hold of Commissioner Preble, her term expires in June. So, we're, we're okay, all right. But it's uh, it's just a matter we've had we've had issues with this in the past. Uh, I had a conversation with Commissioner Kirshen before the meeting started, uh, letting him know that the Libertarian Party needed to get him reappointed again too. But uh, it's the responsibility of every commissioner to see to it that when their term is coming up for expiration that they get in touch with their appointing authority to make sure that they get reappointed in, in a timely fashion. So uh, just just a heads up, uh, we've done update on staffing at the recorder's office. How is staffing at the elections office going? Uh, so far so good. Right now we are hiring approximately 40 intermittent employees. If you, um, we do have the supervisor, Mary's uh, position available. People are applying, but we're having kind of trouble with finding people that can qualify for what she was doing. We also have a senior, or excuse me, a tech level position open as well that we're currently hiring for. Okay, any other questions as it relates to staffing, Commissioner Tillman? When do we get to meet the new director? Uh, I was hoping she would be here today. Uh, uh, she and Mr. Wisely are in Phoenix, I'm assuming, at the Secretary of State's office. Yes. Trying to figure out how to make all this work. So uh, if we're fortunate, uh, you can always drop by the elections office and see if she's available or make an appointment. But uh, I'm sure uh, she's fairly busy at this point in time <laughs> trying to get everything taken care of but she's not avoiding us let's put it yes. that way it's just there are other things that uh, she had obligations to do today so uh, sooner rather than later I would hope good thank you um, next item on the agenda discussion of a DOD ban on removable media uh, I asked to have this put on the agenda was something that came up when Commissioner Tellman and I were working with uh, the city clerk uh, for the LNA for the city elections on the 17th of next month, I believe. Um, and we did run into problems transmitting the data from the tabulating machines to the computer system. And we used uh, jump drives in, in order to move that data. And because they don't want to decertify the equipment between now and the election date, we will continue to use jump drives to move that data. And a comment that was that was made indicated that jump drives were insecure. 99% of the jump drives used in the United States were made in China, and all of them were corrupt. And being another DOD person, I thought this can't possibly be true. So I did a little bit of research on it. And the DOD did ban the use of all removable media uh, in 2010. Uh, part of that was the fact that a jump drive got introduced into the system that was found in the parking lot of a DOD facility in Naples, Italy, and plugged into their SIPR network, and it infected 15,000 computers, and it took them almost two years to clean it up. Uh, it had nothing to do with previously unused or unmanufactured jump drives. This was literally one that was found in a parking lot laying there that somebody thought they'd pick up and use. The other incidences that caused concern with removable media, um, the short version, WikiLeaks, Edward Snowden, and uh, Bradley, a.k.a. Chelsea Manning. And it wasn't so much introducing uh, problems into the system as it was removing data from the system to the point where I believe it was Bradley Manning that used uh, a recordable CD drive that was disguised as a Lady Gaga uh, 
album, and uh, basically what the DOD has done was banned the use of all removable media that is not procured by and the property of the United States government. So I just wanted to clarify that this wasn't a rampant problem out there. Yes, there was a DOD ban. There's still a partial DOD ban on the reuse, use of removable media. Um, there actually was a policy in place when this happened, and I think the most notable change that occurred as a result of this particular incident was the establishment of the United States Cyber Command. So it did prompt a much more refined monitoring of secure networks. So um, yes, they can be a problem, but they're not a problem if people follow the rules that are out there, so. And aren't the removable devices that we use fully encoded? Uh, my understanding is all the removable devices that we use are brand new. They've never been used before. They're provided by the equipment vendor that provides us with the tabulating machines. So uh, if, if, if they're causing a problem, they're causing a problem to their, their own equipment, which I, I hardly think is in their best interest. I believe they're encrypted, too. So you, uh, the no, yeah, the data, uh, the yeah. data is encrypted yeah, for so sure. Not, and it just anybody could pick up a drive and take it home and use it. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, I, I believe though that one of the concerns I, I was actually at Raytheon when that happened. I remember it well. Uh, all of a sudden, we couldn't use any jump drives. Closer to the microphone. We couldn't use any jump drives. I remember that well. I was at Raytheon at the time when it happened. Um, but one of the points I believe you made was that uh, there are concerns about these things, even out of the box, brand new, because they come from China. That was one of the things I think you said. So the fact that they're, the Red 10X is buying these some somewhere, we don't know where, and using them should be a little bit minor concern. Uh, you can buy, and we, we, we were forced to use at that time, special uh, drives, like you, like you said. And I was just shopping. I was curious about it. They're about two, two or three hundred dollars a piece mm -hmm. to buy those things. Mm -hmm. So, but they, but they work, and and that's how you know they're not encrypted. They're not no problem. Encrypting the data doesn't really stop the problem of something being embedded on the drive in the first place. Right, and and the cyber command has taken steps to see to it that the that the drives that are used within. The Department of Defense right. are what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. But that and doesn't they, solve this And you're problem. right. They ain't cheap. Yeah, they ain't cheap. But you can't just go to Walmart and buy a drive that'll work for our machines. No. No. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda, discussion of the Board of Supervisors redistricting. And if my information is correct, this is going to be on the Board's agenda at the next meeting. Um, this is something that is going to impact... Uh, the election for two Pima County Commission board members, I believe, uh, this year. So they're trying to get this done as soon as possible. Based on the information that was distributed, I assume the rest of the commissioners got it as well. Um, the plan that the redistricting committee uh, appointed by the Board of Supervisors is going to present is is uh, something that, for the most part, equalizes the population within less than one and a half percent variance in, in all five supervisor districts. But to me, the most noticeable change that's going to occur is Precinct 127 is moving from Supervisor District 1 to Supervisor District 3, and that's a huge precinct. I believe there's almost 6,000 registered voters in that precinct. Uh, and it will have an impact in the 2024 election because the current PCC board member from District 1 resides in that precinct. So uh, there, there will be some changes there. But And I believe uh, the board had until July 1st in order to finalize their redistricting, but they're trying to get it done sooner rather than later because of the PCC board election that will be impacted by, by their redistricting process. So just a, a point of information as we move forward with that. Uh, I know that's your appointer's district is, is receiving and your appointer's district is losing. So any comments, questions on that particular issue? No? <laughs> we'll, we'll keep our eyes on it. But, um, <laughs> yeah. um, 
The next uh, item uh, I had on, on the agenda that we haven't already discussed was run back monitoring, but do you have anything else? I, 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 do, I guess th there's nobody here that can answer that question uh, about run back monitoring. What do we do at run back? I mean, is there anybody there monitoring it, the process there? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner White. Um, I had an opportunity to visit Runbeck for a, a guided tour about two months ago. The entire plant is video surveilled. Uh, they have a system of monitoring their network uh, in their what I'll call command center. Uh, it's it's a very impressive center that they they monitor all of their network connectivity all of the time, and uh, the system will shut down if they get an intrusion. Uh, there are no political party observers in there, uh, so far as I know. Um, and there are no provisions in the law for there to be observers uh, in there either. So, um, you know, for the video surveillance aspects of it, I guess if a question arise or a, a someone wanted to know what happened when, uh, they'd be able to access that through a court order. But so far as I was able to determine, there's no uh, real-time monitoring. And Runbeck is, serves nationwide. And so it would be very difficult to know what jurisdictions ballots were being processed at any given time because it, it's continuous 24 hours a day during the election cycle. And uh, that's, that's all I know about that other than I don't know whether that addresses your concern or not, but it, it actually does. In, at least parts. Nice to hear they have a nice security system. Says we don't know anything about it, and I'm aware that the law has no provision for observers in there. It's really a, more of a question: Should there be uh, political observers in there? It's the only place where there aren't any. Eh, sounds like they've got pretty reasonable security up there. So it just it's more of a question than a uh, you know point of yeah. We, it's a problem because well, they have the same lockdown security that most secure facilities do okay. that all of the entrances and exits from the doors are monitored with a key card so you know who's in and out of the room uh, all the time uh, all of their employees even the part-time employees are vetted with background checks uh, by a separate company by, by run back they do that on a contract basis um, but you know, it'd be very difficult to decide who should be able to get in here to monitor from 3 o'clock to 3.15 when that city elections ballots are going through the process. I, I just think that that might be a fairly complex uh, decision to be right. made. No, well, no, thanks. And I appreciate the update because I was we were, we were not aware of the facility itself. So thank you for that. It's a great, great answer. I'm, ha I'm happy. Other questions or comments? And by my tally, that concludes all the agenda nope. items for one, discussion. One more. One more. One more. We have. A, I, had, I had an item on there about the security plan. It's on the back, back of your, on the back, back of your agenda. No, item L. Okay. L. Item L. Yeah. We, uh, you know, a couple of about three or four, three or four, about three years ago. So we spent a fair amount of time uh, talking about the security plan for elections, things like that. We have not ever talked about that again. But I think it's very timely, now that we are going to a new system of voting, uh, to ask, has the security plan been updated to account for the, the issues with the, e the voting centers and e-poll books? I guess the first question. Well, basically, you're using the same. Yes, it has been updated because you're using, you're using the original security that you had. And then on top of that, you also got password verifications you've got and then you've also uh, limited who would be who is available to get into the system and have like administrative privileges or certain privileges so you're going to have a short list of who can get in there and it's, you're going to have additional uh password password checks before you go through so you're going to have at least two different password checks two kind of verification forms you know that you have to that you have to be able to go through in order just to get into that and it's going to have a short list of who's able to even get into it. So, I mean, if you do have an issue, you'll see a list of maybe three people that got into it, and you can see the steps that they took to get into the program and use it. That's fine as far as it goes, but now we've added a new dimension of the voting centers, 
which have their whole different things, the access to the internet, for example, backup plans for problems. I mean, what are you gonna do when there's a power outage? What are you gonna do when there's an internet outage? When, no, please don't tell me they don't happen. They, we had one just a few days ago. I've got a document here from last year, 15 pages of inter internet outages. Oh, we're, no, yeah. we're definitely working on backup plans. We, we're going back and forth right now and coming out with a procedure that we can do depending on what happens, what, different type of scenarios, whether it is a power shortage, internet shortage, a flooding, whatever it is, you know what I mean? So we are coming up with plans and backup plans so we are able to compensate for anything happening in the future. I mean, so that's what's happening currently. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Mace. Um, Commissioner Hurley, uh, I, I would make a note that this is uh, definitely of importance to District 3, which has a large rural population. I'm thinking of- Commissioner Mace, could you get closer to your mic? Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm just thinking uh, that this is definitely of, of on the radar for District 3, as it does have a large rural population. I'm thinking of Ajo, Aravaca, you know, uh, Picture Rocks, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely have interest in this as well. So I appreciate uh, Commissioner uh, bringing up the topic. And I'm assuming at some point when we go online where the security plan for the elections department is published, we will see the updated plan? Yes. Is that updated plan currently there or has that changed? No, no, it's, it's, it's just being updated as we speak. Well, I mean, we're having meetings and coming up with scenarios. We're also using the same, the same type of security when it comes to the internet and the, excuse me, your, uh, your points. Yeah, so for your, for your uh, cradle points, we're also using the same type of cradle points in internet security as the sheriffs. So that's also another form of security that we're going through. Commissioner Hurley. I think we need to probably re revisit this, have an update at the next meeting, I think. I would concur with that. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Uh, future agenda items, other than the two just mentioned? Final update on the legislation. Right. Mr. Mr. Rassi is going to be back again. Um, agenda items. Uh, I would direct the commissioners to look at our bylaws. Agenda items should be submitted to the elections department uh, no later than a week before the meeting so we can get them compiled. And uh, if there's background information, and there's a ton of it today, uh, provide an ample opportunity of time for uh, people to digest that information. And based on my conversation with Ms. Morales earlier, uh, Mr. Federico, you're going to be my point of contact as far as the agenda and everything is concerned. So I will visit with you at least a week before May 20th to see what our agenda looks like and what we need to do, if anything. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion about meeting in this room as opposed to the Abrams Center. Um, I. I personally think the Abram Center is a little bit nicer. It may be a little bit harder to get a hold of, uh, but uh, we're kind of at the mercy of the county. We will be here or there, uh, and as soon as we know where, I will endeavor to let you know. Uh, but um, our <clears throat> next regularly scheduled meeting should be May 20th. Does anybody have any problems with that date? I'm assuming Commissioner White got his taxes paid. <laughs> so did I. As, as did I, and I would rather not have. Okay, uh, any other business that needs to become Mr. Chairman, this group? Mr. Commissioner Early. Just to clarify, the point of contact for s submitting any agenda any items, items is Federico. Mr. Federico. Okay, can you send out uh, your contact information to everybody? I may, I may have it, but I don't think I have your direct email in that stuff, if you can just send out to everybody yeah, that, I can. that reminder, yeah. it'd be great. And, yeah, provide, provide that information to right. all of the commissioners, please. I, I know we're in a state of flux. We've had uh, what we would call fruit basket turnover, uh, both in the recorder's office uh, and uh, in the elections department, but uh, 
will make allowances for the discombobulation that that causes, but uh, let's try and get back to right. some kind of a normal plan sooner rather than later. And I, I, I do appreciate the accommodation. My, some of my items were not within that week, so I appreciate the accommodation. Anything else? Hearing no other comments, this meeting stands adjourned.